real quick video to do today. My tire's getting a little thin on my daily driver Suzuki, so we gotta change it out. Let's get going. Here it is, guys. This is my daily driver. This is a Suzuki 600 GSS X 600F Katana. And we've got my uh, KTM dirt bike there. But as you can see, this tire is down to the wear bars and it won't take an inspection sticker. And here in Maine, we have to do yearly uh, and safety inspections and that tire will not take a sticker. So we've got to get that changed out. If you haven't seen this video, guys, check it out. I bought this bike. I paid, I think, $700 for it and completely went through the entire bike. This bike had been wrecked before. Uh, this is my daily driver, like I said. It is super reliable. I would hop on this and take it cross country any day of the week. That worked good. Yeah, left a little bit of tire. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta take the cotter pin out so I can get the axle nut loosened. Like that. Now I can loosen the nut. Now I should be able to just remove the adjusters by hand. Yep, there we go. Get those nice and loose. And do the same thing on the other side. That should allow me to push the wheel ahead. There we go. And get all kinds of slack in the chain. And then take the chain off. And there's that. The chain is now off. Now just pull the axle out from the other side. That should come right out. And there it is. Just like that. Alright, let's get in the shop. One of the first things I'm gonna do is pull this drive out of the way. Now we'll pull the valve core out. Now we're gonna put the tire on the tire changing stand that we built a while back. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up above. This is super handy. If you change any tires whatsoever, this is a huge time saver. One of the ways I break the bead, guys, I just use the clamp on the, on the bead and it just busts it right loose. It's pretty easy. Just keep squeezing and eventually pop the bead loose. Now what I got here guys are just pieces of uh, milk jug that I cut up and I just use them as a rim guard. Just stuff it in and you can pry against it and not worry about chipping up your rims. So what I'm doing here guys, I'm just making sure that these pieces of milk crate that I cut up stay between the bar and the rim so that way I don't end up scarring up my rims. And then I just pry it around and it's almost there. Now we just got to break the bead on the other side. Putting the new one on is a lot easier than taking them off, I think. Anyways, again, just using your milk crate protector. And you got to get this side of the tire. This is what makes it hard, is getting this side of the tire into the smallest part of the wheel so you can pry the, wheel, so you can pry the tire off. Okay. And now I'm just going to kind of slide the rim around. Definitely want to make sure you got some lube on it too. And if one side gives you a problem, 
start working it from the other. I'm going to put a little cheetah bar on it guys, this will help get a little more leverage. Yeah, this should do it. Oop. Yeah, it's almost off. There it is. Now I'm going to set the wheel up on the balancer. And this is just an extra step that I do. I find the actual heavy part of the wheel and it's not always the valve stem like some would think. All right, there is the heavy part of the wheel right there. We'll just verify it. And it comes right back to there again. You can see the valve stem right here, guys. So, you know, a lot of times when they say to make the t dot on the tire uh, align with the valve stem, that's not necessarily true because obviously this is not the heavy part of the tire, the valve stem. It's down here. So you can see right here, I've got the mark in pencil of where the actual heavy spot is. So now all i got to do is just line the heavy spot up to the red dot that is somewhere on this tire which is right here so that red dot signifies the light area of the tire so you line up the light with the heavy and it shouldn't use as much uh, wheel weight and i'm just replacing the tire with what i had on it before it's a metzler 160 66 uh, 17 so and these are directional tires obviously so we want to make sure the arrows go the right way all right so the tire needs to go this way, just like that. And the red dot is here, and the white mark is right there. So we're lined right up already. Put a little bit of juice on the tire, help it on. Definitely putting a tire on, it's a lot easier than taking one off, I can tell you that. Almost on guys, almost. Last little bit of the bead's always hard to get on. Ah, there we go. Now you can see our red dot is lined up with our white mark. This bead is always a little bit harder put a clamp on this side to help keep the tire in the middle. It'll make it go on a lot easier. And now I'm gonna try to seat the bead. I don't have the core in it yet, I'm just gonna put air in it with this. I love this part when it snaps. It always scares me. There it is. Now we'll put the core in and we will air it up to its proper pressure. There. So now that it's aired to the proper pressure, what I'm going to do is just Squirt some soapy water on it, and if it's got a leak, it'll beat up and we'll know about it. All I did is, this is just a dish detergent inside of a, just a drinking bottle, and I just put a small tiny pinhole in it. I use it all the time, so. And, yeah, if there was any leaks, we would see it. It would be bubbling like crazy right now. Okay, let's flip it over and check the other side. No leaks. That's good. That's what we want. All right, let's see where the uh, heavy spot is on the rim. Huh, same place it was before pretty much. You can see where my weights were before on the top part. All right, so I'll put a little mark on the top side of the tire. There, and I'll put a wheel weight on it and see what it does.
All right, guys, so the weights are almost exactly where they were before, uh, and it's uh, just a quarter of an ounce more, but I'm thinking I might have to make that less. So I would say that these uh, Sport uh, Tech tires are probably pretty close uh, when they send them out as far as like weight and balance because it's taking pretty much the same weight. When it's at 9 o'clock, it goes back to the bottom, and when it's at... Three o'clock, it goes back to the bottom. So I'm gonna pull one of the weights off and call it good. All right, here we go. Let's put this uh, tire back on. Right. Try to jam a block of wood up underneath this thing to help get the axle lined up. What I don't need to do is knock it off the stand. That'd be cool, huh? Yeah. So to properly adjust the chain tension on this bike, we got to do it on the side stand. And the range is from a little over three quarters to a little over an inch so that's a little loose that's probably about two inches i'd rather run my chain slack than tight but that's a little too slack we'll give it a half a turn see what that does that's pretty close We'll call that good. Now we'll stuff a rag in so we can get it all the way onto the adjusters. There we go. 47 foot pounds is the fork. Now we'll put in our cotter pin and we'll be good to go. And there we are guys, it is all done. I'll get another 7,000 miles out of this tire. That's pretty much all I get out of them. So yeah, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something you like, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. New videos every Friday, usually welding videos, and they're gonna be more of those now that we're coming into summer because as I mentioned earlier, I've gotta repair and maintain all my equipment over the winter because it doesn't do it itself. So. If you guys are wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. Until next Friday, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. See ya.